A few months ago, we began a regular feature looking at some of the things that Walker does in Niagara. Today, our guest Lizanne Nickel looks at how they are collecting food and liquid waste in particular from Niagara restaurants and grocery stores and turning it into renewable energy. And Lizanne, this doesn't happen at the Thorold facility per se. No, no. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for having me. Well, it's thank always you for a being pleasure here. to come and talk about Walker and their different divisions, but we don't do it at the Thorold facility, no. We have a large plant in Woodbridge um, that we process all of the grease trap that we pick up. Um, but we do pick up from restaurants in Niagara and we have a team that runs out of Woodstock also that handles Hamilton, Brantford, Niagara, so this region as well. For the uninitiated, what is a grease trap? A grease trap is, or it could be a large interceptor, is put in restaurants to collect all of that food waste or material that they don't want going into the municipality or the water um, or the pipes that run into the city water system. Um, it's very similar to when you make bacon at right. home. Um, the remnants of that bacon you typically put in your green bin on your counter. So for restaurants that gets caught in what's called a grease trap or an interceptor. And this is like liquid gold when it comes to its ability to create energy. Yes. Years ago, when the anaerobic digesters first started, uh, they were simply at farms and they were using manure from cows, um, but they found that it, the process was taking a long time. So once they started to add the grease trap to that process, it sped things up. So they call it rocket fuel. It really is enticing for the micro organisms, the bugs, all of that, that eat all of that, and then generate the methane gas, which they can convert to energy. You pick up from Niagara restaurants, yes. you, you send trucks in there to pick this up, yes. that gets trucked directly to Woodbridge? It does, yes. So we would pick up at restaurants, casinos, hospitals, anywhere that has a large kitchen that is providing that service to the public. Uh, grocery stores and then we would pump it into our trucks and take it to our plant where we would process it um, for the anaerobic digester. Tell me a little bit about that process. What actually happens to it? Well at the plant, specifically in Toronto, we have 11 holding tanks anywhere between 10,000 gallons to 15,000 gallons and we pump it into the holding tanks and we go through what's called the settling process. So we separate the water from the grease trap and then eventually we can return the water to the city all clean, we treat it, we get tested by the municipality uh, probably about three times a week to make sure that right. the water is good. Then we run the rest of the product through what we call a DAF and we sort it. Um, and then we get it to a slurry, which is all that high energy rocket fuel for the AD. We pump it back into our tractor trailers and our tractor trailers can haul about 5,000 gallons and we take it to the nearest anaerobic digester, minimizing our carbon footprint as well, because that's very important to where, us. Where are those anaerobic digesters? They're all over Ontario, but we have partnered with specific anaerobic digesters from the beginning. So a lot of them are family-run dairy farms. Um, some, and the other one is the Toronto Zoo. So the Toronto Zoo recently um, commissioned an anaerobic digester, which is fairly close to our Toronto shop. And we're running probably three to four loads there a week. Wow. To run that AD. And, and they use that to do what? They turn the methane, well, they add what we call zoo poop. <laughs> so the animal waste from the zoo. And then we show up with our rocket fuel. And they also add the green bins that everybody has in their household to put their waste in, their kitchen waste and cuttings. And they create that slurry that then the bugs start to eat it, creates the methane, and then they convert that to energy. The zoo actually goes direct to the power grid. So they are currently running about 250 homes off of the anaerobic digester that is managed by the zoo. That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. You also collect solid waste produce from yes. grocery stores. Yes, we do. Yeah, we have a program called the Walker Grinder. And when you go in a grocery store and they have all that nice veg laid out for you or fruit, where you can pick it up and put it in your recycling bag and take it home. They've cut off all the extraneous things. They've cut off the it. leaves and yep. everything else to make it look pretty on the counter. You got it. This is what you're picking up. Yes. So those leaves go into a grinder unit at the back of the store or the excess or the fruit that is, cannot be sold. 
um, and then it grinds it into a slurry, puts it in a tank, we come and take it out of the tank. So it's grinding it right at the back of the store? Right on site. Wow. So it eliminates all of the problems that grocery stores used to have with putting it in a green bin at the back, creating a lot of... Attracting raccoons. You got it. Yeah, everything else. smell, all the things um, that is detrimental from a community standpoint. So that eliminates all of that, and then we take it to our plant, process it with the grease trap, and then take it to the anaerobic digester. So that's put in with the grease trap stuff, and that's yes. what creates the attraction to all the bugs, you said? You got it, yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah, wow. it's a very cool process. What are some of the advantages of doing this? Well, first of all, all of that waste doesn't end up in a landfill. Um, so we want to make sure that we take all of the food waste, the organic waste, and we use it to create that energy and limit the impact it has on our landfills and how we, how we work the methane gas out of the landfills versus the methane gas out of the ATs. This is all part of Walker's strategy and, and their commitment to, to doing things that actually are good for the environment? Correct. Yeah, it's, it's important for us that we have a positive impact on the community and the environment. And our, our theme is we want to give more back than we take out. Um, and so this relationship with the anaerobic digesters is a really important part of Walker's long-term plan. The really cool thing that ends this process though is there is what's called digestite that is left over from the anaerobic digesters. So if people are wondering what we do with that, they then haul it to the farmers, put it on the fields, because it still has good nutrient value. Right. The process starts all over again. So it becomes fertilizer for the farmers. Yeah. So there is no waste in an anaerobic digester. It's a full circle process, which is really cool. This goes on in Woodbridge, where else? This goes on, uh, for us, we have a plant in Vancouver, BC. We have a plant in the Woodbridge uh, location. We have a plant in Ottawa. And then we have small locations where we have holding tanks, such as Alberta, um, Woodstock, Ontario, and St. Hyacinth. Lizanne, I've said it, I think, three times during this interview. Fascinating. Yeah. I, but I can't, I can't help but say it again. Thanks so much for shedding some light on this process. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Thank you for having us.